Welcome back to Online Darts. We're here in Den Bosch for the media day for the Dutch Darts Masters. Vincent, looking forward to this? Yeah, of course. I've not done anything in darts for two months, so uh, it's, uh, it's nice to be back. I was going to say, look, there's a lot been around you and whatever this year, and I remember we spoke to Mike and the Billups of the World, it's been a difficult year. So first of all, how, how are the darts and how are you the head of this? I've not played uh, for more than a month, and then I started again because uh, there was a lot going on in my personal life, but it was, it was very difficult to handle, and I didn't, my head was not on darts anymore. I was just very negative, and then I, I was resting a lot, and then, then you, everything came out, and I thought, oh, I was worse off than I thought I was. And, spoke to people and uh, feeling a lot better now but we'll have to see how the dart's going. Yeah I remember obviously speaking to Michael with the build up to this because I, I threw it back at him I said that when you were at your low Vincent got you for it so are you trying to help him and he was like yeah he said deep down I don't think he wants to quit so is that fight back again? We have to see because you're at home and then you're thinking about it and you want to play again but now it's it has to be when you're traveling and you still have that mindset at home it's very easy to think you want to go for it but when you're traveling and, and, and when you're alone in your room and then you're going to the, to, to the venue, you have to have that same fire that it, when, it's, when you practice or when you're at home. And I can't say that now. I have to notice it when I'm traveling. So in a, in a month time, I know where I am. So what you said there, in a month's time, if it's not there, will you happily walk away from the sport? Then, then you have to, because then it's not there anymore. And you want to compete with the best and you want to give them a game. And if you're there just to, 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 just to be there, then you have to realize you're not good enough anymore. I, I, will, I will not decide in a month if I quit yeah, yeah. or not, but you know if the fire is still there. And you have to uh, put everything aside and you have to practice and you have to do everything to become the best player you can be. And if that's not there anymore, then you have to walk away. Roger, away from darts, obviously we see you on um, beer play doing the commentary and the punditry and in the UK that they compare you to Roy Keane in football because of the way you commentate and people love it. Is that something you're really enjoying It's like the next stage of your career in that punditry? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. That's that's a possibility. Yeah, I like doing that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always very honest and very yeah. very <laughs> direct. But um, I see how it is. And, and, and yeah, I'm not holding back even if it's Mike or, or, or a friend of mine. I don't care. It's just the way I look at it that I'm going to tell. Obviously, on Michael, you know his game probably better than, than anyone. Where, where is it after the world? Because we saw the Jacqueline and Hyde performance. Obviously, he was very good against Stephen Bunting, yeah. and then massively disappointing against Scott Williams. So, where, where is his game right now, as, as his friend and someone that knows him? I don't, I don't think it's changed a lot since then. It still was. Yeah, you couldn't can see it last week in uh, in Bahrain. Um, first two matches were great, and the final was very disappointing. He's not, not playing well. So, we talked about it a lot today uh, we, we, because he's back from holiday. Yeah. We spoke about how I see it, and I gave him some some things to think about, and then he has to do with it or not. Really. I mean, I'm not the boss of him, so um, I, I, I told my vision of it, how he can become better, and, and that's not only about the mindset; it's about his throw. Uh, it's about how he lives uh, outside of darts, what he's going to do about it, and we talked about every, everything, and now we're going to see. Uh, if he picks it up or not. Look, we all know that Michael loves to be the centre of attention, the one that everyone's talking about. The emergence of Luke Littler doing what he's doing, everyone's speaking about him. Do you think that will fire Michael up again as well? Um, that has to be the one that fires him up. If that's not the case, then something is completely wrong with him. Then, then the, also for him, the fire is not there anymore. He has to be pushed now from Luke Littler and Luke Humphries. Those are the ones he has to chase now. Even if that Littler is behind him in the rankings, he's a talk of the town. So he has to be motivated. If he's not motivated by that, then there's something wrong with his mindset. We've seen some rule changes in the PDC as well recently, and we know you've been critical of them in the past. What's your thoughts on the Euro Tour changes? Are you a fan of it or, or not? No, of course not. This, this is a very bad for uh, the upcoming players, for the newcomers in the game. It's, it's, uh, I mean, I, I get it that from the sponsor and from the PDC Europe side, I understand it, but it's, it's not really good. <laughs> it's, it's a very bad decision. It's, it is a really, really bad decision and it's going to make it very difficult for people uh, to come through and to, to do, because the Euro Tour was a very good uh, learning school to, to play a sort of TV tournaments and to, to come up and, uh, do, and this was a very bad decision. But you can see the decision is made by people who not played darts or sport high. It's by businessmen and that's what goes wrong most of the time. Does that make 
the top 16 almost a closed club now. Yeah, it's almost impossible. Even if, if players uh, are uh, not in the top 16, but the other 16 of the Pro Tour, and they're playing in the other side, you have to uh, win seven out of the 13 times, six out of the 30 times. You have to make up for eight, nine, ten thousand pounds. So you have to qualify then six, seven times and win a round yeah. to equal that money. Yeah, but not exactly, but you have yeah. to win so many matches to equal that money. And you have to qualify, that's three matches to win now. So you have to win six matches on a day to qualify for two Euro Tours and win one round and you get 5,000. And the other ones have to win a couple of rounds. So it's going to be very difficult to catch up with those players. It's going to be really difficult for, uh, for players to, who's outside of that yeah. top 32 elite player to come come back in, uh, in the game. Has this problem come because of the scheduling? There's too much, perhaps too much starts because obviously the Premier League lads, we've seen they're out on their feet for that first half of the year. They then miss Pro Tours and Euro Tours and their rankings drop. So it's the scheduling causes as well. Of course, it, but, but that was always the case. But if you, if you look at the top 16 in the world, I get it that uh, the PDC Europe wants the top 16 in, in uh, how they want them in. I get that. But then you can't use 16 as well from the Pro to side. That's too much. Yeah, yeah. That, that should have been eight or whatever. And then you have 16 players left, and there are six players of that is not even from the Pro Tour side. So it, you make it so difficult for players. Even even uh, uh, Luke Littler is gonna gonna have a tough time to qualify for the match play now because he has to play so many matches to qualify for a Euro Tour and do well there. I mean, he's an exceptional talent, and he's probably gonna do it. But he's exceptionally good. Yeah. Look at the other players who come through. How can they How can they make it? That's gonna be really difficult. The way you talk and the passion you've got for things like that, getting involved with the PDPA when you finish. Is that something that you try and get involved with to make darts better for the players? I don't, I don't think the PDC would want that because I would say about this, this is not a PDPA decision, this is a PDC decision. Because if I was on that table, I would never agree with this, uh, this thing. I would say we have to look at the numbers, but you have to get it fair for the players who just get a tool card or the ones who are just outside of that top 32, and I would never accept it. So if they were, I would send an email to all the players and I would say, sorry guys, we tried it, but the PDC didn't listen. And I don't think the PDC would want that, me to do that. Also, we saw an interview you gave to the Dutch press a couple of days ago about playing in the Dutch Open with your with your son. Is that something that you're really passionate about, playing with, with Kevin in that tournament? I really wanted to play in that one, but I didn't know that it was such a big deal. I, I thought, you see the guys in America playing uh, on, online, yeah, yeah. on streaming and everything. Yeah. But then the media picked it up that I was playing there. And everybody went mental. Yeah, we, that's what we saw. It yeah, was published all the yeah, and UK everybody stuff. said, oh, it's not allowed and cheater, well, whatever. I heard my son saying something about it. Is it? I didn't, I, for me, it was not a big deal. I just wanted to play with my son a couple of rounds and, and, and try to do as best we can together. Um, but uh, obviously, it's uh, you're not allowed. Have you asked whether you can have dispensation to play yet or not? No, because uh, I heard that this TV as well now for the right, finals. Okay. So that's going to be... Uh, um, I will ask, but I probably know the answer. It's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you, mate. Thank you for no always. Problem. Good luck.